the folks that I work with every day deserve that dignity and that respect. They deserve to be treated like they're people. Um, and I get to love them when they can't love themselves. I get to be there for them and support them and build them up and remind them that we're here to support you when you can't do it for yourself and, and, and build that confidence back up in them. Um, in 2010, I lost someone in my life that I was extremely close to, to their addiction. Um, and I wanted to make a difference. I come from a background of addiction and mental health. Um, I was raised in it. I was born into it. Um, growing up, I didn't understand it though. Um, I always just thought that the people in my life were choosing to be addicts. They were choosing to be homeless. Um, I was never educated on on substance use or mental health. At the time I was working in the hotel industry and I wanted to work with people in recovery. Um, I started working at a woman's shelter in Prince George and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the women that were coming right off the street. Um, and I was relating to a lot of them because I come from a, a huge family in Prince George. My mom was the youngest of 13 kids. Um, and some of the ladies that I was now working with, I grew up with them. I went to school with them. I, um, I had a lot of personal co co um, connection to them. And the only difference between myself and them was that I had a support system in place where lots of them that were, that grew up in, in the, the, the hood of Prince George, they didn't have the family supports that, that I was fortunate to have. I see. So you found that because you grew up in such a big family, you were able to to give that to those who you didn't have that in a sense? I think for me, it was an eye opener when my family member passed away because they accessed the shelters and the support that we had from the services when this individual passed away too. And I wanted to be that safe person for those folks that were accessing our services. I've always wanted to be, um, I'm not gonna solve homelessness, I'm not gonna solve addiction, but when I meet that individual, I wanna be a safe person for them, whether it's just to give them a shelter for a night, a hot meal, a shower, someone to talk to, just to listen to. Um, so that's why, because I, I, I had hoped that when my family member was in those services that they got that dignity and respect that they deserve. Mm -hmm. um, so when you said a little earlier, you said you started to work in Shedler and you directly I fell in love with it. What um, what are the, the things that you do on the daily that you were doing on the daily there that really like 
that gives you the, the, the love of the, the thing? I think um, just building that rapport with your clients, with the folks that we're, that, that we're serving. Like, um, I, had, I had been in that, I had worked at that agency for, for six, six to seven years before I left. And um, building those relationships with those, those ladies, like, it was um, almost healing for me too. As, as much as it was for them. Like, um, you, you think about the traumas that the folks that we're serving, that they go through, and that um, I'm that safe person for them, that I, I could, you know, build that rapport up with them, that when they're going through something, that I'm that safe person that they can come to. And, I mean, I couldn't just walk into that shelter and become Susan Smith's best friend. I, I had to work at building those relationships that they could trust me. So whether it was um, we would let them come in in the evening times and in the kitchen and let them help us with the food prep, um, fold laundry together, um, do activities. We were always doing activities with our ladies, just building up that relationship with them and doing quote unquote normal things with them. Um, so this was still in Prince George? Yes. Okay. And you said you stayed about six, seven years there. Mm -hmm. And then from there, did you directly come here? I did. Okay. Yeah. Did you, was it because like the position opened or they helped you? Like, no. Well, okay. um, I moved to the Okanagan um, for a relationship. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we came here in 2017. Okay. Yeah. And so being here, you started to look for the same kind of job? Yeah, I actually seen an ad in um, the newspaper that the John Howard Society were looking for, um, for, for residential workers, and so I applied. Um, so when I had first started, um, it was John Howard Society, and it was the first year that they had got the funding for um, their emergency winter program for 24 hours. So I was hired on, and I worked um, at the old gateway shelter in the basement for our, our MAP program. Um, and so I worked there three days a week um, in the afternoons. And then from there, we then became shortly after I was hired on, we became turning points. Um, and I worked um, at the Howard House. We went down to the Howard House after the emergency weather program ended. And I worked four days a week there. And then from there, I took a temporary position um, as the program coordinator for our 33rd Bridge housing program. So um, the individuals that were in that program were the folks that were going to be moving into the new um, My Place Supportive Housing. So I worked with them for 10 months. Um, after that, I went back to, which was now open and built, the new um, Our Place Shelter. Um, and I worked there. And then COVID hit. And we... Um, the Gateway Shelter and the Art Place Shelter combined into one shelter and we went to the curling rink. Um, and then I took a temporary leave from my position and I worked um, as a community support worker for the Camus LaFleur Street Clinic. And then from there I went back to the shelter. We had then moved to the Amalgamated Shelter um, where I worked Monday to Friday. And then I took a temporary position with our housing prevention program. And then I just can't hold a position. From there, I went to our hotel program and our pivot properties, and I was a community support worker for that program. And then I took over the program and managed that program. And then I got a call one day to come to if I could fill in temporary at the shelter. 
and then I ended up taking the permanent position as the site manager for the shelter. You've done a lot of things. I have. I was just, just realizing that, like, holy, yeah, I, I have. I've, I've worked in almost all the programs here and all our sites. Do you need a bowl, Mitch? Yeah. Okay. No, I have the uh, everything. I have an individual that I've I've known in our services since I've started. Um, this individual started out at the Howard House in the shelter, um, and then they went to the Bridge Housing program, and I worked very closely with this individual for for ten months. He was broken, he was depressed, he just was giving up hope and we worked closely with, with, with the individual for months and built that rapport with, with them and um, to see how far he's come along and, and how well he's doing every day. And I remember a couple of years ago, it was around Christmas time and Christmas is always hard in this field, it's always hard because People are away from their family and their kids and, and loved ones, so Christmas is always hard. And um, it's a lot to take on. And, and I remember going home, and again, I was at that point, you know, I was away from family too, and, you know, it was just kind of like sad. It's, it's hard. And I remember coming into work the next day, and there was a, a box of chocolates and a Christmas card with my name on it, and I opened it and I read it. and. So, it was from this individual telling me, like, um, just wishing me a Merry Christmas and just, like, how important and I was to him and his success and um, how in the mornings when he would get up, we would, me and my coworker would be there and we'd be singing to him and dancing and just treating him like a human and like he's like you believed in me when I didn't believe in myself and he's like Jesus Christ you even bought me a car because we helped him do his back taxes and um, we got to watch him move into that brand new uh, building and, and housing and that little card I kept coming back those little moments that when these guys can't believe in themselves we're there to believe in them and know that we see something and that they deserve that. So, yeah. Sorry. Pretty extraordinary thing. It is. You know? It is. Like, it's. You're doing something that, like, who else is, you know, like, he, and the things that like, you don't even hear about. Yeah. Uh, you know? So, I mean, yeah. it's. I mean, if you go into this line of work for, for gratitude daily, you're not going to get it because there are a lot more bad days than there are good days, but there's just those small little victories that, that you take, right? Like, um, just small things. Like, I don't, yeah, like you said, if you go into this job for, for gratitude and if you think that you're going to go in here and you're going to make a difference and you're going to change the world, then... But it's those little tiny things like you, you got someone that's coming in and they have every wall up that you can imagine. And, you know, today, Bed 56 didn't call me. A they called me by name. That's a little thing. That's a little thing for me. You know, if I'm able to sit down and have those conversations with, with the folks that we serve, those are little things because now they're talking to us, now they're building up the rapport. But at the same time, like you think about it too, like this line of work, this field has a high turnover rate because it's a lot, it's a lot to take on, it's a lot, it's a lot of emotion behind it. But I also get up every day and keep coming back because it's the consistency for them like, I've knocked down those walls, I've knocked down those barriers. I want them to see me keep coming back. I, 
because they build up. They, they finally trust us, and then one day we're just, we're just gone. I used to joke around about um, with my clients back home, and because you always see it. You see someone coming in, and they're going to, they build up those rapports, and then they're just, they're just gone. And I used to always um, joke with my ladies back home and say, like, you guys will know before the management team knows before I leave. Like, I won't just up and leave you guys. And to this day, I still go back there. When I go home to visit, I still go back to my old, my old um, place of employment. And um, lots of my clients have passed on now. But I still go back and take little, little treaties and, and visit. And just because I always told them I would. Sure. Yeah. It's always good to remind ourselves from where we were from and where we started, and because mm -hmm. that reminds you also your whole journey from that point and everything that you achieved. And mm -hmm. so it's always cool to get back to. It is, you know. Even with some of the clients that I have in the shelter right now, um, they remember me from when I first started. And my one client always bugs me. He's like, look at how far you've come. He's like, I'm so proud of you. I remember when you used to do my laundry. He's like, and now look at you. Now you're the boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, thanks for humbling me. But yeah. But every day gives you the strength to face all these things you're facing, to take on all this energy and to be the one that is around like all this craziness and help you know, people getting back into the right direction. Why do you think you're doing this? Um, like I've always said, everybody is somebody, somebody. So, um, that's why I do it. Like, like I said, like, I come from a long line of of addiction, trauma, the mental health, and I think about throughout the years of of the times that my family members needed that help and that support. And I would hope that they were treated with the dignity and the respect that they need. I would hope that um, that they got that respect. And I think that's why I do it. I, I, um, I just care so much about about our clients. Even, like I said, it's just they're not able to love themselves and see past their hurt at that time. And um, And they've lost all hope. Like they just think that the world's against them and just being able to build that little bit of confidence up in them. Because everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. Everyone deserves to be loved. Everyone deserves to have that. And um, they're just lost right now. Um, and like I said, no one woke up one morning and just thought, I want to be homeless, like, and the demographic of the people that I'm seeing lately that we're serving, it's not just people with substance use, it's not just people with mental health, it's because of the rental market, the housing, like, families can't afford their rent, so, and then I, I remember what that was like, like, so, just to be that safe person, I guess, I mean, I could go on all day about why I do what I do, but, to be that safe person, to be able to give someone shelter, whether it's for a night or a month, um, to be a listening ear, to be a safe person. Um, yeah.
Oh. Hundreds. Probably, yeah. Or when you first started, did you know that, that you were going to help that many people? No. no. I didn't. And I didn't know that I would love it as much as I do and be as passionate for it as much as I do.